Well, thank you all for coming out today. My name is Ken Martin. I am the uh, recount director for the Dayton recount team. Mm -hmm. just want to read a statement to you and then answer your questions today. Joining me here today is Charlie Nowen and David Lillehog, our uh, lead counsels. Uh, Ten days ago, Minnesota voters showed up and cast votes for offices up and down the ballot. With all of the precincts reporting, Mark Dayton received the most votes, nearly 9,000 9, more than Tom Emmer. During this county canvas process, which ends today, which by law occurs after every election cycle, county auditors and election officials around the state double check the results for errors or problems. The process ended today and it affirms that once again Mark Dayton received the most votes. Here are the facts. Last Friday before this canvas began, Mark Dayton's margin over Tom Emmer was 8,856 votes. A week later, this number is virtually unchanged at 8,755 votes, a net change of 101 votes for Tom Emmer. A .00479% change of votes cast overall. This is a minuscule change to say the least. In addition, during this process, post-election reviews were conducted in most of the counties. So far, our election system during this review has a clean bill of health. It will be mathematically impossible for Tom Emmer to overturn these results, barring some unforeseen problem, which we haven't seen in this canvassing process. We're fairly certain this will not happen. In fact, we're hearing from county officials as well as others that this canvas has gone amazingly smooth. Now, it is fairly likely that an automatic recount will be triggered. However, it should be noted that Representative Emmer can, still can decline this recount. That said, we respect the law and know that this entire process will be completed on December 14th when the State Canvassing Board meets and certifies the election results. At this point, there's nothing to suggest that Mark Dayton would not be declared the winner. We aren't the only ones. Legal experts on all sides agree with us as well as statisticians and history prove, proves this point. And in fact, in 2008, there were only 264 votes that moved during the recount process itself. Now, if you're a Republican who is on the email list of Tony Sutton, you would be led to believe that Minnesota's election system, one of the most examined and admired in the nation, was rife with problems. Statements about machine malfunctions, unprotected ballots, and the Hennepin County problem continue in their rhetoric. We know as many, if not all of you, have reported that these statements are plainly false. Machines malfunctioning? Well, this is news to the Secretary of State and everyone else. Unprotected ballots? Not a single report. And the Hennepin County reporting error? It's been explained time and time again and proven to be not an issue. Furthermore, it's worth noting that it was our side that was hurt in this error to begin with. So our question to Tony Sutton, Tom Emmer, and Tim Pawlenty who has his own attorneys, by the way, working on this legal effort. Show us the evidence. Show us the facts. Where are the problems and where are they in such large magnitude that it affects the outcome of this election? We'd like to know because so far what they've mentioned has been continually proven to be untrue. Now to talk a little bit more in detail about the issues they are raising is our lead recount counsel, Charlie Nowen. Hi everyone, I'm Charlie Nowen, it's N-A-U-E-N, -E and uh, I represent, along with David Lillehog, the Dayton recount team. I want to provide a little historical context. First, let's talk about this county canvas, and then the, uh, the uh, election review, the post-election review that's going on right now. I can tell you from my own experience, and from looking at the information from the last many years, that the county canvas that's just about done, uh, one county left was very different than from 2008 and then our county officials as well as the state election officials really should be thanked profusely by the people of the state of Minnesota for the great job that they've done. It really has gone amazingly smoothly through the entire state and everyone agrees with that wholeheartedly. The numbers as uh, Ken said the shift is almost imperceptible uh, there's almost no change after the detailed canvassing done across our entire state. There was one significant shift in the Wadena County. It was a 99 vote change, and that makes up virtually all of this 101 vote change. And that's also different from 2008, when there were several hundred votes that changed during the canvas project uh, process. Post-election review, as you all know, is part of the law in the state of Minnesota. It happens at every general election and each county audits precincts uh, uh, to see how the process works 
And when I say audit the precincts, I mean they actually go in, select precincts, and look at each individual ballot and determine how well the machine worked <coughs> and, and, um, and how the process went. Now, that's not done yet. I think it'll be complete next week, and that'll be ultimately reported by the Secretary of State. But what we found is that most of the uh, uh, post-election reviews have been complete, certainly over 50 percent. And at least anecdotally, we're not finding any issues. I heard of uh, one change of one vote in one audit in one county. So you'll know about it, but it just confirms what you're reading and what you're hearing and what's uh, being said in the county canvas. Now, let me talk about some of the uh, issues that have been raised uh, by Representative Emmer and his representatives. Unsubstantiated accusations is the best way for me to describe them. Um, there's talk about voter count discrepancies, voting machine malfunctions, and also Hennepin County. But look at the Canvas results. They're coming back very accurate. And there basically is not any changes or reports going on uh, that you, anybody's hearing about regarding any sort of systematic problems. Machine malfunctions. We have not heard of any sort of large machine malfunctions in the state of Minnesota. Sure, it happens every election. Some machines stop or they, they work slowly and then they're corrected right on the scene. But um, although there's been a few incidents reported, it's nothing like the 200 incidents that uh, was stated by uh, Representative Emmer and his attorneys. The Canvas process would have shown that anyway, and uh, we all know that Canvas process came through with virtually no change. Hennepin County. The Hennepin County reporting error was corrected in 45 minutes. Everybody knew about it. It's been explained publicly by Rachel Smith, who heads the election effort at Hennepin County. And I might point out that at the county canvas that occurred last week, it was unanimous approval of the canvas. I think there was a five vote change across the entire county. Six. Six, excuse me. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 that motion was made by a Republican county commissioner, and it was a bipartisan group on that canvas board that approved it unanimously. In any event, if there's going to be a recount. You all know that each and every ballot is hand counted. We're going to look at every single ballot of the 2.1 million cast, and we're going to find out. But all the records so far indicate this is a tremendously accurate election. In terms of uh, what's next, uh, we move on assuming there'll be a recount. And then on December 14th, the totals will be certified by the state canvassing board, and a result will be declared. And obviously, if the current margin holds up, the, the result that's declared is that Mark Dayton received 8,755 more votes than Representative Emmer. Uh, we're following the, the, con uh, the comments made by the Minnesota GOP, the Republican Party. And, um, you know, we've heard about these issues, but again, these are unsubstantiated allegations and nothing has been confirmed. I'm going to put it in a historical context as I worked along with David on the 2008 recount in the Frank and Coleman race. During that recount, there was about 264, do I have that right? You do, sir. Uh, uh, ballots, votes, that changed during the entire process of the recount. In other words, from the first day of the recount, 264 total ballots. That's about three votes per county in the state of Minnesota. Compare the situation to today. If Representative Ember gets 100 votes for every single county in the state of Minnesota, he still would fall short. Mark Dayton still would be, uh, have more votes than Representative Ember. Uh, that's all I have to say right now. And then, let me just add one last thing. The, the actions uh, and rhetoric in the last few days by the Republican Party and Tom Emmer would suggest that they have no interest or little to no interest in the recount process itself, the integrity of our election process. What they're really trying to do is make a case for a long, protracted, extended legal contest. And uh, to what end? And what cost? Really to damage the ability of Mark Dayton to govern in this state. And that's just un un Minnesotan. It's uncalled for. And I don't think that the voters of this state in 
intended for this uh, to happen. They expect that on December 14th, when this recount process has run its course and that these results are certified, that Mark Dayton will receive an election certificate. And we want to take Representative Emmer on, uh, at his word. Yesterday on uh, Michelle Tafoya's uh, show at 4 p.m., he said he didn't want to see a protracted legal battle, but it's still not definitive. We'd ask uh, Representative Emmer, we'd ask the Republican Party to uh, uh, let us know uh, what their true intentions are here. And uh, again, to show us the facts if they're claiming wide-scale voting irregularities. So with that, we'll open it up for questions. Mr. Allen, you mentioned a wide change in Medina. It was a 99 vote change. Um, it affected the vote total by 99. Uh, that's all the detail we have right now, but it was picked up in the, uh, in the canvas as, as those kinds of errors can be picked up. Otherwise, throughout the state, um, there were a few votes here and a few votes there, but it netted out to a two-vote differential. Uh, if, you, if you accept Wadena, it's a, literally, literally a two-vote differential between uh, uh, Emmer and Dayton for all the other counties. Regarding the machine malfunctions, do you have a number of how many machines malfunctioned that night and either were repaired or in, are in question now? Well, first of all, every election there's some machines that start up and you got to get them going and there's, there's issues because they sit for two years or, or uh, between elections. Uh, but uh, we've heard reports of something like 15 uh, or a very, very low number, more of a typical number. It, well, if, if anything, it's uh, atypically lower than, than usual. And we haven't heard of any reports that would suggest that the mach machine malfunctions affected anybody's uh, vote, getting their vote counted uh, across the entire state of Minnesota. Mr. Martin, you mentioned earlier uh, that Palenti gotten his own, is getting his own legal team. Is that staff, legal advisors, or outside? Well, I, I, I would just remind everyone about the connections between, between uh, the Republican Party and Tom Emmer's legal counsel and Tim Pawlenty. Michael Toner, uh, uh, he is one of Tim Pawlenty's presidential attorneys, representing him in his uh, 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 bid for the presidency. And of course, everyone knows the relationship between Eric Magnuson and Tim Pawlenty. They're very close former law partners, and Pawlenty appointed him after Magnuson headed up his judicial review team to be the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So we're, we only raise that to remind people that Tim Pawlenty is also uh, um, directly involved in this, uh, in this process, and his, uh, certainly his legal team is uh, uh, representing the Republican Party and Tom Emmer in this case. So. Through his relationships, but there's no, to be clear, there's no separate legal team being hired by him. That's right. That's correct. Thank you. Do you all have any major democratic Uh, no to the counties, although we, because there is extensive requests from uh, Tony Trimble and the Republican lawyers, we were piggybacking along on those. We'll get what they get, but we haven't separately asked for anything. We did make a request to the Secretary of State's office to get sort of the basic information uh, when it's collected by the Secretary of State. So is your team without concern about anything regarding this election other than the closeness? without concern about anything. You know, the, the concern, I think, is that uh, um, the, the issue of filing a contest and how that might uh, delay uh, Mark Dayton entering in, 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 as governor of the state of Minnesota. Uh, we've heard conflicting reports. Uh, yesterday, Representative Emmer said he wants to get through, make sure all votes are counted, and he, he focused on the recount and focused on December 14th. That's our focus, too. Uh, if it goes beyond that, then obviously there's legal matters. Uh, you have seven days to file a contest. The trial starts 20 days after that, and uh, that raises uh, issues of carrying over into January that, uh, that trouble us. In terms of ultimate legal issues, I haven't seen any, any legal issues identified that give me concern. Could I um, say a word on data practices? Uh, David Lillehaug, L-I-L-L-E-H-A-U-G. The day before yesterday at the Humphrey Institute, the elections official for Washington County, Kevin Corbett, said that he had received data practices requests from the Emmer campaign that were going to require the production of 35,000 documents in Washington County alone, and that each of those documents would have to be redacted for private information. Multiply that times 87 counties, and it's clear that the Emmer campaign has embarked on one of the biggest legal fishing expeditions in Minnesota history. Um, they aren't trying to hide the ball. It's our view that there really isn't a ball, 
and that they're trying to find the ball. And so they're, they've launched this wide-ranging search for the ball. And that's going to cost the counties a tremendous amount of money. They can pass on some of those expenses to the Emmer campaign, but at a time when they're preparing for a recount, and at a time when they're trying to get the rosters in order and all the information reported to the Secretary of State, the Emmer team has put an enormous burden on the counties of the state. The Republican rhetoric, how much of that do you think has to do with trying to keep their donor base interested in the recount, given the margin? Well, I, I, I can't speak to their intent, but it's clear, it's loud, and uh, obviously they're trying to send a message to people that they're going to uh, delay this uh, uh, election as long as they can. And uh, we, we want to respond in kind and say that it's not only on Minnesotan, it's not right, and the will of the voters needs to be enacted here. They spoke clearly on election night. Now we double check those results through this county canvassing process. Those results showed that it's virtually the same that it was on election night. Now we'll go into this automatic recount again, unless uh, a representative at Emmer chooses to waive it, we'll go into this automatic recount. Those re results will be checked for a third time and at that point, we fully expect Tom Emmer and the Republican Party to allow Mark Dayton to get on with the task of building his administration. Are you telling Tom Emmer not to take his right for an automatic recount? Not at all. Okay. That's a decision he has to make. So your concern is protected legal battle after the Th automatic recount? That is correct. Mr. Lillehog, is the margin here the reason you're characterizing it as a fishing expedition? If I recall from 2008, both sides, including the Franken camp, had substantial data requests and even went to court prior to the recount mm. with those requests. What's, what's different? You've suffered a slight bit of memory loss in two years, but let me, let me refresh your recollection. At this time in 2008, the Franken team knew exactly what the problem was and was going directly at that problem, which was improperly rejected absentee ballots. And the Franken team was right. You'll recall at this time in 2008, we were going off to court to get copies of the rejected absentee ballots. And that's about it. That was about the extent of the data practices request. What you're seeing from the Emmer team is something very, very substantially different. It's an idea that they're behind by 8,700 votes, and my goodness, there were Republicans elected to the legislature, so therefore there must have been something wrong in the governor's race. Now that, of course, doesn't recognize the right of Minnesota voters to vote DFL in one race and Republican in another, in another. That's why I think what they're doing is an enormous fishing expedition. Rather than really having a definite idea that there was something wrong in this election and that if it went wrong, they can somehow make up 8,700 votes. That's the difference. Mr. Lillehoff, I wonder if you can just speak to this briefly. Now, what, what happens to the electorate of the public confidence in the system? I mean. You know, if the population's polarized and these votes are going to be close, the only people that win here are the lawyers that get involved in these fights. How are the people affected? I, I'm just <clears throat> wondering what your view is. Well, I think there is an issue of public confidence in this process this year. And that is, first of all, you shouldn't attack our system of elections and our election officials unless you have evidence, unless you have facts. And so far, every contention and every allegation that's been made by Tony Sutton and Tom Emmer and the Emmer lawyers has proved to be overblown or just candidly incorrect. And so I think there is an undermining of public confidence when you make allegations and you, you can't support them. There is also uh, a potential loss of public confidence if people believe that when they cast a vote that the winner isn't going to be seated or that people will use delaying tactics and legal maneuvers to prevent the new governor from being seated so that the old governor, who nobody voted for in this election, by the way, can sign legislation that's rammed through during the delay. If they tried that, I think that'd be a hijacking of state government, and that would be the worst thing for public confidence in our yeah, system. No, isn't that counterintuitive for them as part of the system? Um, well, I, what may be counterintuitive to you may not be for those who wish to uh, make a grab for political power. Ken, do, you, do you see the Secretary of State schedule as being conservative? Do you see it a way or a potential for accelerating that if the recount is moving along 
quicker? I mean, what's the, I mean, are you guys going to petition to move this along faster? To, we're, we're fine with the schedule that the Secretary of State's office laid out. It's timely. We feel that uh, the process, uh, if it runs its course and ends on December 14th, as it should, that that will still allow time for the governor-elect, whether it's Representative Emmer or uh, uh, Mark Dayton, to actually put a team in place and get ready to govern. So uh, we're uh, um, happy with the schedule that's been laid out. We feel it's fine and that there, there may be a need uh, uh, some of the counties may finish earlier, some may go all the way up to the 7th, but we're prepared that this process will take place over the course of that week, the 29th through December 7th, in as quickly a, a way as possible. Yeah. Excuse me, sorry. What legal options are you guys pursuing to make sure he's, if he is seated before, before a contest is potentially filed? Are you pursuing them? Well, we're investigating them, uh, Tom. We, we are, you know, it, we're, because uh, on December 14th, we fully expect that um, the uh, result declared will show that Mark Dayton has more votes than Representative Emmer, probably 8,755 or something very, very close to that. And that will mean that uh, the, the numbers have been certified, the result declared. Uh, Mark Dayton has been chosen by the, the voters of the state of Minnesota. He certainly is qualified uh, to become uh, governor and we'll have to see whether there's going to be any legal con contest, but we are investigating where we can go at that point if there is, because uh, he's got to be governor on the January 3rd. Is it clear that Palenti would stay in office? Do you agree with that reading? No. No, not necessarily. So there may be some question about whether or not Palenti yeah. would stay in office. Should there be a contest? The Constitution is clear, actually, is the term ends on uh, uh, for the sitting governor on, on January 3rd. We're, we're doing our legal research. We're trying to get ready for that uh, possibility is what it boils down to. And are you trying to get ready for the possibility that to challenge Emmer's ability to file a contest should the recount end where we are now? Um, I don't know about that. Uh, the, the law does allow a contest to be filed uh, under, the, under the Minnesota statutes, um, and then it has to be resolved uh, by a three-judge panel. Back on the Constitution, how do you, how do you interpret the second clause in that? after four years or until a successor is chosen How do you, you're saying that you have doubts that that means what it's been said to have meant for these a couple of years. Well, the Constitution says that uh, the, the, the new governor, if you will, goes into office if uh, that person has been chosen and qualified. And uh, at, on December 14th, uh, you know, we'll see what the numbers are. But if the numbers are show that Mark Dayton has more votes, he's been chosen certainly by the people, and he's qualified. Um, but we're looking into that. You know, it, 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 one thing we're really asking the other side is, you know, as David said, you know, what, what are the issues here, and and uh, what have you identified as a problem that could possibly erode a lead of 8,755? There's nothing that's been uh, established so far that would get anywhere near it. We talked about absentee ballots. You all know that. Absentee ballots are not part of the recount anymore. In any event, there's only 3,000 uh, rejected absentee ballots across the entire state. So that's not going to do it. That's a different circumstance from two years ago. Um, the the canvases have come in very accurate. There'll be some vote as we, we sit and, and there'll be challenges to votes. But two years ago, all those were several thousand. Uh, then it was reduced to um, a lower amount and ultimately the canvassing board shifted 264 votes uh, on, based on challenges of the ballots. That's nothing near what it would be necessary to erode this kind of lead. Could you return to that constitutional question? Minnesota law says you don't get an election certificate if there's a contest going on. The Constitution talks about a qualified successor. I would assume that the successor is not qualified unless he or she has a certificate. Where's the, where's the gray area that you're looking into and investigating? The difference between the Constitution and statutes. But the Constitution is the one that says. Yeah, that's the one that says chosen and qualified. It's the statute that talks about the contest. The, really, the issue is the effect of the contest on uh, whether somebody has been chosen and is qualified to become the governor of the state of Minnesota. So the key question there is the qualification. You may argue that the qualification rests in getting the highest number of legally cast votes, not in whether or not you have an election certificate. 
Well, the, uh, there's no mention uh, about an election certificate that I'm aware of in, in that provision of the Constitution. Um, so chosen is the uh, top number of votes. And, um, you know, qualified, certainly is qualified. The, the, you know, the issue is what is the effect of the, of the contest if there is one. We're not seeing any issues for one. Let me reemphasize that. But that's what we're looking into, so uh, Rachel. Of an election certificate and be chosen and qualified for its constitution. I think that's something, yeah. something we'll probably discuss down the road, if only if necessary. Yeah. Based on what you've seen now in two recounts and how little the vote totals <clears throat> tend to change, looking down the road, do you think the law needs to be changed about the half of 1% threshold? Is, is that too high? Yes. It is. And there was an attempt to change it to 0.25 rather than 0.5. Uh, my understanding is that was vetoed by Governor Pawlenty uh, out of the 2009 uh, legislative session. That would have made a difference here. Uh, we've, we've looked at all the other states, and we are at the high end, uh, particularly given the number of voters we have in the state of Minnesota. So yes, uh, it is too high because it, it's, you know, historically, nothing like this level has ever been switched to uh, to uh, make a, win uh, a winner out of a loser is what it boils down to. Could I uh, yeah, add to go that? Ahead. One reason Minnesota's election system is so good is because we use optical scanners. And those optical scanners, it's been proven time and time again, are incredibly accurate and it's being proven most recently in the post-election reviews. What we found in 2008 was that our estimates were a little off and that the optical scanning machines were even more accurate than we had understood them to be. Now, after 2008 also, I think everybody's being more careful. There was a panel of election experts at the Humphrey Institute the day before yesterday, Rachel Smith from Hennepin, Joe Mansky from Ramsey, Kevin Corbett from Washington, and they agreed that everybody was more careful this year. And I think Cindy Reichert, who's now the elections official in, Hennep in uh, Anoka County, said this was a very lovely election. So you had fewer people voting than in 2008. Clarifications in the law to make things clearer and easier. And then on top of that, the elections officials, uh, and I think down to the uh, precinct election judge level, being more careful. Now through, if we go through a recount, we'll see if the voters were a little more careful too. Not really. That was a different issue, and it involved the interaction between federal law and state law. There was not an issue with respect to how the Minnesota Constitution would be interpreted. So, a uh, different year, different case, few of the same people around. And a little while ago, Jason asked you about uh, great Republican donations. How are your donations going? How much money have you raised? Who have you raised that money from? And if your overall message is you one, don't worry about it, how is that going to help you raise money? <laughs> Well, our message to uh, people who uh, supported Mark to begin with is, look, we need to make sure that this election is protected, that uh, Mark is clearly the, the victor in this process. And unfortunately now, uh, given state law, uh, that we respect the, this process that needs to take place, uh, we're going to need to raise money to fund a recount effort. That's our message to our donors. We just started raising money. Um, you know, it's a, it's a different message than the Republicans. We're not claiming victory but what we are saying is that right now through this first step in this process it looks that like likely that Mark Dayton is going to be the next governor of this state. And how is the raising of money going? So far so good. And the folks whose big checks you personally have seen before over the last year are those the same folks that are I, donating now? I would imagine that a lot of people who invested with uh, groups uh, on the independent side on the party side the candidate side are going to be interested in investing and making sure that this recount is well funded. Not yet. Are you 100% uh, confident that all the ballots have been are secure and protected? Yes. So, the, I mean, the, the accusation that they're making that they haven't been secure, Republicans are making that they haven't been secure here? Again, just 
it's easy to get up and, and say that there's a problem and not show us the facts, show the public the facts. And what we are saying today is show us the facts, show us the evidence. Uh, it's easy to say that there's malfunctions uh, at the, in the, uh, with the machines. It's easy to say there's unprotected ballots. It's easy to say there's a wide-scale problem in Hennepin County. But again, show us the facts, show the public the facts, and they haven't done that to date. Do you think it's easier to argue psychologically doubt over assurance? That's a very existential question. <laughs> 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 Who's the existentialist among us? <laughs> Ken, you said uh, earlier that um, you think the goal of the Republicans is to call into question the legitimacy of Mark Dayton as governor. Can you, uh, can you elaborate a little more on that? Well, look, I, I think if you look again at the rhetoric the last few days here, what they're trying to do is delay this as long as possible to damage his ability to govern. Again, I think that most people in Minnesota agree, uh, most experts agree that it's not a question of if Mark Dayton will be uh, governor. It's only at this point a question of when. And that when really rests with the Republican Party and Tom Emmer and how long they want to prolong this process. So I, I guess my, my sense of it is if they can delay this into January, February, March, it would be very difficult at that point for Mark Dayton to come into the middle of the legislative session and govern the way he needs to. And that's what they're trying to do here. And that's really unfortunate, not only to Mark Dayton, who, who uh, received the most votes on election night, it's unfair to Minnesotans who expect that government's going to be able to work for them. Yeah, um, quick question for you, Mr. Lillehard. Did you? Last one, if that's okay. Yeah, it's up to you, I guess. Last time, uh, when you when you were overseeing the recounting, the hand recounting of the ballots and people were involved in that, do you anticipate problems? I, I know we have a different situation here than Alaska where Murkowski's was a handwritten, but do you see challenges on every single ballot coming out? Do you anticipate that'll be prolonged or is there a, a particular deadline that has to be hit or could that be extended? if there were continual challenges? Well, there are a couple things different from 2008 that should make this hand recount move along more quickly. First, we're talking about a re reduction in the number of ballots. The total hand recounted in 2008 was 2.9 million ballots. This year we're talking about 2.1 million. That's, I think, a little bit over 30% less. Uh, the second thing is, um, ha actually having a second recount in just two years, you're going to have people who are experienced, we're, we, we know how the canvassing board ruled on things last time around. Both teams uh, and the Secretary of State's office and the local officials should be more efficient this year. And then there have been some uh, relatively minor changes in the regulations and the proposed rules that also may think, make things move. There really is no reason why we can't get this re hand recount done and have the canvassing board declare that Mark Dayton received more votes on December 14th. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Emmer Thank you. Has For the, I guess we're not done. <laughs> Let me just say this: uh, I haven't seen that, and uh, there was some word there was going to be a lawsuit filed. But I appreciate the update there, Rachel. Um, uh, we haven't seen that. Uh, we're, we're pretty respectful of the uh, of the time commitments. We know that uh, across the state, these huge requests are involving huge time commitments by the counties. But so far, I haven't seen any issue at all. Thank you, Charlie. 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 Yeah.